it's like another level of immersion, I think, because it's actually taking in more than just what normally a game gets. Because in order to, it really takes in what a player's feeling at any given time, which can really make it easier for the game to react to what the player is feeling, which is, I think, is great. <laughs> Well, uh, coming into it, Erin had already had you know, quite a few ideas on how she wanted to try to extract the information about whether or not a person was scared, and she had done uh, quite a bit of research on to even just uh, how the skin reacts whenever you get scared and what, how the impedance of that changes, the, the physical characteristics of how that works. And she had already a, an idea of which direction she wanted to go, but as uh, she being the person that she is, she gave me free freedom to look through uh, different designs, different parameters. In the end, we decided to go with uh, heart rate variability, something that we could really uh, get the point across with, something we could access very uh, quickly and that still has a, a great deal of information in it. And so that's really the way that the pulse is changing over time. It gives a single parameter there that we can correlate then with stress. Um, the, uh, we use a chest strap sensor um, it, uh, the sensor itself only measures um, two, two elements. It measures when the bites, uh, when, the, when the beats of the heart occurs, and uh, it measures um, the, constant, the, the constant bites per minute that the person has. Um, after that, we uh, pre-process that, we pre-process that information for the game, and uh, post-process that what comes from the sensor itself. Um, into some more data that compose what it's called the HRB. Uh, and even though we don't have all the elements from the HRB itself, we have enough uh, information to interpret when a person is stressed or not. Um, it really, just as a, as a simple explanation, it goes back and forth between the way that curve looks. And if, it, if you've ever looked at an EEG at a hospital, you see that, that rise in potential and then the drop as that pulse membrane depolarizes. And basically, as you see that over time, you get, you get the heartbeat that everyone, everyone hears and they think of when they see ER or anything that's on the front of it. And you can get that, that simple, a time average signal of sorts if you just hold your hand at any one of the pulse points around your body and you can feel just that, that sharp thump. And really all that is is just averaging that into one pulse. So if you look at that EEG curve, you can extrapolate more information from it if you take it to the frequency domain. And there's been a great deal of research on heart rate variability and, and how you get that particular term. And it's something that psychologists and biologists are still kind of working on, how much information is really there, something that I'm still researching right now that hopefully we'll know more about as the spring rolls around. But the basic premise is that as those pulses get, get quicker, as your heart rate quickens, it you begin to see those responses to fear, because generally when someone's scared, their pulse rate increases. When someone's been doing work, their pulse rate increases. And so as they're reacting to these environments, they're seeing something that may make them jump. You're going to see a sharp buildup, a dramatic buildup in that heart rate that would gradually fall off. And especially in this game where we, we build on the fact that they've got to learn to manage that, that build off is not always going to be exponential. It can be added upon by how the environment reacts to their reaction. So it'll, it'll always change, but if we looked at that full signal, that full EEG pulse, it would be too much information for us to try to extrapolate. So by using this heart rate variability, we see how much, what the mean difference between those two pulses have been. And then over a certain amount of time, we get a good average about how, quick, how quickly their pulse is changing. And by that sense, we're able to tell how well they're adapting to what they're being shown. It was a really tricky trip <laughs> to figure out how to build that one. But uh, so far we have that working. Uh, there are a couple of things we want to improve, but uh, it's uh, working really good. Like so. I think the sensor is going to be really intriguing stuff to um, in, in, uh, uh, put it in there, because especially, especially for the experience of people who are playing the game and what they get out of it is that they know now by statistics how uh, how scared they were how like how the game was really fearful and like the sensor data that you get from it just basically analyzes a person's fear level biofeedback in games um what i think about biofeedback in games is that it's an interesting technology that it's just being uh, it's just appearing in games there's a lot um there's a, a really 
a long path to go there and that we're just going uh, we're just at the beginning of what can be achieved i believe it's an it's something it's it's one uh, it's one of the things to explore in games in the in the near future and it's probably going to like the 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 amount of effort spent on that area is going to increase more and more mostly because games try to merge the player into them so so far uh, we have gone through visuals and uh, we have improved visuals a lot from basic pixels to the gorgeous graphics we have now uh, we have also done that to sound we had the bytes sound that from classic Mario games and Zelda games to the uh, outstanding music we have in games which, which have orchestras and uh, and sound designers and, and, and has a, a, a huge team behind them doing just a fantastic job that could be only get from a symphony or uh, or, uh, um, or a big group on music and it's not my strong point but I still believe it's it's really great job that's being done then uh, and then we have extra accessories and this is something that has been played on in the in the past but it has not have enough attention so we have um, augmented reality accessories to immerse the player more uh, the biofeedback uh, element of the game uh, will you know the the very base purpose of this is to uh, to be able to uh, control the tension um, or maybe just play with the tension uh, happening within the player um, and this is definitely a, an innovative and, and new idea and I think it's really cool um, it creates challenges for us musically uh, because you almost have to be able to follow uh, these changes or even guide them uh, with the music because um, in a way, the music has to know what the player is doing and what they're feeling um, in order to react and maybe make them feel more scared um, and maybe in some cases to make them feel more calm. Um, and, you know, we see this in film music a lot where um, the music as uh, one segment is there to help guide you, just to sort of suggest, yes, you're supposed to feel scared here. Um, yes, it, things will calm down now. Um, in this game, it's slightly different because the music is reacting to you a little bit and also saying, yeah, you're supposed to be scared right now. Um, I'm gonna try to make you a little more scared um, and, and vice versa um, to, to bring down the tension. I think it's gonna be a shocking experience for the user to start to make the connection between their their level of fear, stress, whatnot, and they'll come to some real. All of a sudden, they'll have that realization. The game is reacting to this, obviously visually, but on the music end, we're trying to make that just as drastic. I think that's going to be there's going to be some moment in the game for each user, maybe at different points, where it's kind of going to kind of hit them that oh wow, I'm immersed in this on a level I've never been immersed in a in a media experience.